Even the horses in this proud old game of harness racing are blue collar. Renowned not for their flashness, but for their durability, toughness and stamina. When the best of the best standard breads from Australia and New Zealand come together to run for a cool one million dollars, they call it the Inter-Dominion and they call it out loud. I'm the Mighty Quinn takes the lead. I'm the Mighty Quinn. There's not enough O's in the word smooth. 2013's a red hot edition of this time honored classic which has headline pacing since 1936. There's the husband and wife team behind Caribbean Blaster. And in this family, look out, the woman does the driving. Caribbean Blaster clings on though and wins. There's the father and son from the Wild West behind this two-time Inter-Dominion champion. But I'm the mighty queen. He is going to absolutely brain them. There's Tappy, John Tapp. For so long, the voice of everything racing, trying to live out a dream in nightmare circumstances. And what would the great race be without a favoured Kiwi invader? This time, it's terror to love. Welcome to the $1 million 2013 TAB.com.au Inter-Dominion. From the new home of harness racing, Menangal Park. Slap bang in the middle of Sydney's blue collar southwest. Live on the one and only Nines Wide World of Sports. I, I guess the Inter-Dominion horses uh, a year early. It's a preview of, of the best horses developing in the land. Yeah, there's no question about that. Uh, we're privileged to see Chris and me and also Smolder across here racing in this race. There's big races back in New Zealand. They've elected to come across here to, uh, to run in this meeting. Um, there's no doubt if we're back here in 12 months' time, you'll be seeing both of these in the Inter-Dominion final. This race over 1,609 metres. We'll leave you with our caller from Sky, Fred Hastings. This is here on this program as to how they will fall after the, uh, the first couple of hundred metres, where they'll be in running. But Chris and me, dominant in that trial just uh, a couple of days ago. And it's the one putters like. They're getting set. Louvre comes up with Kiyang Steamer. Mark Beauty and Chris and me come up. Restrepo in the green colours. They're just about set. Local Hope Scandal Man, they're ready. Set now. There's the green light. They're off in the chariots and one of the best to get going was Mark Beauty. Smolder began fast with Excitus in the city and just in behind those was Louvre. Further back to Kiyang Steamer taking a forward position and Chris and me was trapped a little deep as they run into the first corner. Restrepo's in behind those and then came Smolder Scandal Man. I'm victorious and Jason Rules is going to settle at the tail of the field as Mark Beauty takes up the front running and goes by the 1200 metres leading a length and three quarters now on Louvre who has it back in Third spot on the outside was Kiang Steamer and then came Chris and me dropping into a gun trailing spot, the favourite. It's one out and one back, trailed by Excitus in the city. Restrepo was a line. Smolders in the running line about third or fourth last. Back with it a scandal man, Jason Rules, and last of all on the inside as I'm victorious. There'd be about six lengths. First quarter was 27 seconds as they get to the 800 metres. They're halfway home in the chariots, 28 2 second split, 55 2 for the half and the leader. Dark Beauty, but up on the outside, Chris and me has gone around the outside to sit second. Louvre trays the tempo, and they were followed by Kiang Steamer. Restrepo's worked away from the uh, in inside. It's now coming up three deep, and that's going to Pratt Excitus in the city. Four wide as they run onto the side. Smolder's held up in traffic, and then Scandal Man Jason rules. And I'm victorious is at the tail of the field, but it's still Mark Beauty leading. He hasn't gone for Chris and me yet. It levels up on the outside, feeling the strain as Louvre on the inside from Kiang Steamer. Restrepo starts its run. And down the outside, here comes Smolder as Chris and me lets down with its run. And Chris and me hits the lead, beats off Mark Beauty. Smolder and Restrepo are trying to rein them in. And Jason rules from a minute back, but it's Chris and me. A hundred to go, full of running. Smolder has gone to a clear second. It's closing late, but Chris and me is hanging on. And Chris and me wins the chariots of fire. Beats Smolder, Restrepo. Blanket go for the fourth. Out deep, Jason rules and Keying Steamer. Close up, Scandal Man. I'm victorious, made up plenty of ground. And not all that far away was Mark Beauty. And the last two to clock in in the chariots of fire for 2013 were Louvre and back with an Excitus in the city. 27-6 for the last quarter. They've gone 150.5 and that is a new Australasian record.
Very fast time, an Australasian record, Chris and me delivering on that big plunge. The money told the story, and as you said, a perfect trail from that start position. Yeah, great drive. A lot of people thought he may have ended up in front, in front Cameron. It wasn't to be, but he got that nice 1-1 trail in harness racing terms. Dexter Dunn, his driver, he's the whiz kid of New Zealand harness racing. He summed up the race beautifully when he left the trail to go and sit outside of the leader. Smolder had to make a big run from back in the field. His run in defeat has been absolutely huge. Restrepo was good in third spot as well. Best horse wins a race, but Smolder lose no admirers at all in running second. Two absolute future stars of the sport. And that time, I didn't think we'd ever see four-year-olds go that quick here. Right, uh, it shows that the track hasn't taken any damage from uh, all the rain that's been held lately. Uh, I guess, um, you know, really, the one to follow out of that has to be Smolder, a much more difficult run and uh, taking time off him over the last few sections. And Chris and me probably better suited to only a one mile race like it was today, 1,609 metres. Smolder's a great stayer. The further they go, the better he will be. And uh, that's probably going to suit him when he gets uh, gets up to be an older horse. But uh, privileged to see that one. And Greg Radley's with the winning trader. Yes, Crandall getting no stranger to travelling horses across the Tasman. Welcome back to Sydney. What a, what a day for you. Yeah, a big thrill. We, we come with big expectations, but uh, as you know, horse racing, you never know until you cross the line, but uh, we're fortunate enough to be uh, the first one across, so big, big thrill. He's a wonderful pacer, and he drove him like the best horse in the race. Uh, yeah, well, the only thing I said to Dexter, well, we don't want to be come back uh, and, you know, unlucky story, so he drove him a super. He really did. What did you think when he moved up at the 800? That was the place to be, wasn't it? Get up outside the leader and, and be with the leader so that when it got down to the business end, you were ready to fire. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good summary, uh, Greg. It, naturally, it's, uh, as we've seen, it's very front end racing dominant up here, and uh, you've just got to be outside within the within the 400 metres, and uh, Dexter drove him perfect and put him in that position. I, I knew um, it was pretty hard to beat when he got outside him because he relaxes outside the leader. Well done, Cran. Thank you. And here's the New Zealand whiz kid, Dexter Dunn with Emma Friedman. With this horse and come and claimed a group well, one at that, that the same good. time. How does that feel on Australian soil? Oh, you know, it's probably an effort. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't uh, get any credit because he gets all the credit because uh, there's a massive run by him and he's just an awesome horse. And uh, I'm just a lucky one that gets to sit behind him. You sat on the outside and made your move on that corner as we expected you would do, but he's a star kind of horse back in New Zealand and now Australia's been able to see what he's really got as well. Yeah, that's right. I sort of want to take um, you know, luck out of the equation. I knew I had a good enough horse to, to be able to do a bit of work, so the um, you know, last thing I wanted to be was locked away. So, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's done a super job, this horse. He's still really a baby. He hasn't had a lot of starts and, um, you know, I'm sure come 12 months time hopefully might be in the next race uh, next year. Well exactly right these horses that compete in the chariots of fire are often considered those horses that can go on to race in an inter-dominion you think everything going well next year he could be in with a shot for sure? Yeah definitely you know you never know with horses it's um you know anything can happen but uh yeah look at last year's uh, chariots you know Caribbean Blaster one and he's uh you know he's one of the top three or four favourites for today's final so um yeah, no, hopefully you can uh, carry on doing a job and uh, hopefully you'll see him over here back next year. Well, congratulations to you, Dexter, and the team behind Chris and me. A great start to our program here on the Wide World of Sports, What Cam. a great record, too. 14 starts, 10 wins now. And uh, there's your joint favourite for the next race, the big one, the Inter-Dominion final. I'm the Mighty Quinn with his trainer, Gary Hall Sr. We're going to take a break on the Wide World of Sports. Plenty of harness racing coming up from an angle park. His wonderful name may be a slight fib, because Caribbean Blaster doesn't so much the way he grinds them down. Yeah, that's what he loves. He loves a solid tempo, hard all the way, and he'll come over the top. Caribbean Blaster's coming at the pair of He doesn't like getting beat, and he just wants to run past whoever's in front of him. He just wants to get past them. Caribbean Blaster won it. On their Bacchus Marsh acreage west of Melbourne, Kate and Andy Gath have been working to put the ultimate icing on an amazing year. This is actually one of his least favourite things. What he likes most now is winning, nine times in 11 months for $650,000. But go back a couple of years and the blaster was about as keen as the stable Labradors. He just was a big baby and he didn't want to go and if he didn't want to go, he wasn't going to go. It didn't matter if you hit him with the whip, it didn't matter what you did. Kate Gath grew up in Port Pirie, South Australia, daughter of a trainer. 
All those years ago, would you have ever dreamed that she's going to drive one of the favourites in the Inter-Dominion? No, never, Tim. Never in your wildest dreams would you expect it to happen. Yeah. Peter Thompson had Kate driving his winners as a teenager and later taking the reins of horses from interstate. One of them was Andy Gass. Horses always seem to run for her, which is a plus. And then sort of when she got with Andy and Andy certainly um, step up to the bigger level and yeah. They were married in 2007 and haven't stopped kissing for the cameras since. You know, I think a lot of coach drives in big races have been the best drives of her career and the simple fact I think, you know, we're quite prepared before the race. But a second honeymoon began in April last year at the Chariots of Fire. And it's Caribbean Blasters! He was just too good and um, from that moment on he became a different horse. After the Chariots of Fire, he backed up with the Breeders' Crown. But when her horse drew Barrier 13 for the Victoria Cup, Kate thought it was asking a lot. That was until the start. Literally as soon as the mobile left, we were running and I had the whip out. I couldn't keep up and I was just like, how good is this? I hope they keep going. Caribbean Blaster wins the Victoria Cup. It was a victory of faith, but now they need more. The Blaster has never won over today's journey. He has a lot of stamina. Has he got enough for three Ks? Yeah, you don't know. All these It's new for these horses, never race over this distance at Menangle, a 1400 metre track, there's nowhere to hide. Andy's uncle won an Inter-Dominion, just getting to the final is a marathon. To have an opportunity to yeah, actually have a runner and to be actually have a horse that's probably good enough to win it, um, you know, it will be, it'll be the pinnacle of my career and the, and the owner's career and Kate's career, so you know, it, without doubt it's a race to win. The Gaths have always had the breeding, now they have the horse. The Inter-Dominion, it is the pinnacle, it is the race. But just uh, walking around, gee, he looks good, Anthony. You've, you've got him right and ready to go today. Yeah, he seems 100%, Greg. Always good when you go into these big races with uh, no problems or troubles. So, no, I couldn't be happy with him. What did you think of Barrier 1 when it came out? Oh, I was mixed, but, um, yeah, probably better there than some other places. So, yeah, he's going to need a bit of luck, but I think they all will, yeah. A lot of finals for you. Uh, you've won one before, so you know what it takes and you know what thrill awaits you. Yeah, this is what we're all here for, so... Uh, yeah, it'll be good to win another one. All right. How's your brother, your trainer, uh, Tim Butt? How's his nerves? Or does he does he care? He's pretty good. No, he's leaves it to me. So no, he's good. Good, All the best, Anthony. Anthony Butt there. He's got Marsish Barrier One. And when we come back from a break, we'll look at each and every runner in this year's Inter Dominion Grand Final. Welcome back to Menangle Park. We're looking at the pre-parade here. The Inter-Dominion runners uh, racing for $750,000. Uh, the Melbourne Cup of harness racing and uh, a very, very strong field here, Adam. I'll be keen to hear your thoughts about them. Um, we'll start with the one, Ma Sish from New Zealand. Well, he's a wonderful horse who's really come of age. He was a late bloomer and he, uh, as we just heard from his driver, Anthony Butt, this is Anthony's 19th drive in an Inter-Dominion final. One of the best drivers in the business. This horse won the Hunter Cup, which is one of the key lead-up races uh, only two starts ago. And I doubt there's a horse, Cameron, in the field who is peaking more in time for the race than Marsish. All right, what do you think about uh, the two position four Caribbean Blaster? Um, we've heard from Tim Sheridan uh, the background of this horse. It's a nice story. Uh, is it this year? Well, a female driver won the last Inter-Dominion final here back in 2010, Natalie Rasmus, and this time it's Kate Gath for her husband, Andy Gath. He won the Victoria Cup in December, another key lead-up race, and he was placed in a terrific performance third in the Hunter Cup. He's got er good early speed, so he'll be able to use the barrier draw. He never seems to run a bad race. So if you're looking for a, a safety each way bet in the race, Caribbean Blasters the go. Jack O'Clive, uh, trained by one-time Sydney Premiership winner David Aiken, now based in Victoria. Yeah, well, Danny Frawley of AFL fame. Uh, his family are heavily involved in this horse. You know, this horse about a year and a half ago was racing in what they call claiming races, where he was for sale for just $50,000. He's got He's confident. He's a great stayer and uh, he's a roughie with a chance. Now, if you're looking for the sentimental favourite, uh, here he is, Chariot King, uh, of course, being brought out of retirement. 
Racing very well, but uh, a few problems this week uh, for Johnny Tapp. It's his dream to have this horse here. And things looked great two weeks ago, uh, Cameron, but he's been, he's had a real battle. He had an elevated temperature with a virus. He's been doubtful about taking his place in the field all week. He's there. He's got good gate speed, but I don't like horses that have had interrupt interrupted preparations. I love the fact Tappy is living his dream with a finalist. XL Stride, uh, a great driver, and uh, this one will be somewhere near the pace. Yeah, and he was a long-time leading contender tender for this race. Um, even though he won his heat, he wasn't overly impressive doing it. One of three runners that uh, the famous Team McCarthy family have got in the race. I just think he's a place chance. All right. Uh, which brings us to I'm the Mighty Quinn, which has uh, taken favouritism now after a, a bit of a duel with Terror to Love. Um, give us the pros, give us the cons. Well, the pros are that he has been the best horse for the last two years in Australasia and there's no faster horse in the race. The cons are this is the biggest track in harness racing and I think he's better racing on smaller tracks. Uh, and the other con might be this is a lot harder field than what he beat in Perth last year. Uh, I still think he's an unbelievably fast horse. If he's within striking distance, I don't know how they'll hold him out. Talk about famous combinations. Uh, Gary Hall Jr. and Senior teaming up here and of course uh, he just tore the house down in, in work the other day. Oh, he did. He, yeah, he ran the uh, the quickest uh, quickest last 400 metres ever clocked here. Terra de Love from New Zealand and uh, up until today has been the, the favourite for the race. I guess the one thing is we haven't seen him do much in Australia. He's been here once before and he wasn't at the top of his game. He's nigh on unbeatable over in New Zealand. He was stunning winning his heat. He's got a lot of strings to his blow, uh, bow and he's going to be very hard to beat. Runner up in Perth last year, Mr Magical Mac. Yeah, he's, he gets trained by a car chasing him around the paddock, this horse. So he's an old school trainer. Um, he's a very tough horse. He looks like a bag of bones out there. Don't let that uh, fool you. He'll run a cheeky race at cricket score odds. The nine is out. Key Young Cullen uh, to be driven by Glenn Craven. Yeah, this is from a dairy farming family uh, in, uh, in Western Districts of Victoria. It's a beautiful story behind it. They're living their dream in a final like this. He's drawn the outside barrier. I think that makes it too hard. What about Pub Blitz, the 11? Gee, he's produced some booming runs lately. Certainty beaten in his heat. Most unlucky in the Hunter Cup behind Marsish and Caribbean Blaster. Tricky draw. He's the first horse inside of the back row. He'll need luck, but he's at least a place chance. Mac Alert is uh, another runner for the McCarthys. Yeah, cheeky run in the heat when he did the work outside of Marsish and wasn't beaten far. Then unlucky in an easier race here last week. I think he might need another year to get ready. Bit of bliss. Well, this horse has had a lot go wrong, but I think if there's a horse talking about living the dream, if you want to back the Ruffy that'll go run a cheeky race for you at $27, he's only now getting to peak fitness. Again, from the second row, he'll need luck, but Scotty Stewart won the 1989 final on Jody's Babe as a driver. And the old fella Washaki, uh, lots of career wins, a nine-year-old now. Yeah, this is a fifth in a Dominion series. He's been a remarkable horse, old Washaki, but I thought he was OK in his heat. But, uh, gee, I, I can't see uh, even Washaki returning to his best to win from Barrier 14. And the Queenslander Devil Dodger. Yeah, important to note that he actually starts from uh, where the scratching comes out. So that's Barrier 9, Lincoln Royal. Um, Devil Dodger was, uh, he's only been adequate his last couple of runs. And, well, he's 200 to 1 in the markets and so he should be. All right, the stage is set, Adam. Uh, good luck at home. Uh, hope we've been able to help you sift through your decision making. We're going to take a break on the wide world of sports. When we come back, the 2013 Inter-Dominion Grand Final. There he is on screen. It's I'm the Mighty Quinn, back from $3.60 into $3.20 in the fixed odds, of course, as we've mentioned, trying to complete the hat trick. Yes, uh, just some last minute gear adjustments to the gig there would seem for the I'm the Mighty Quinn. Let's go to Greg, Greg Radley, excuse me, Greg, um, getting very close to a start here, mate. Who have you got? We've got Paul Fitzpatrick, multiple premiership winner here in New South Wales. He's got Pub Blitz, which I believe is more than a fluker's chance here, Paul. Oh, I think he has, Greg. He's uh, drawn an awkward barrier, but if he gets uh, the, the right run in the race, I'm sure he'll be very competitive in it. He was great in the heats, but go back to the Hunter Cup and he was... Uh, he might have been something beaten. Yeah, he was. He got out too late, but they said 53 is last mile over 3,000. If he runs that today, he won't be far from the top. And he trolled beautifully here Tuesday. So we couldn't have him any better. And you know he run the 3,000 too. Loves it. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, thanks, Greg. There's Paul Fitzpatrick. 
Good luck to him. And uh, as we look at I'm the Mighty Queen, you know, it's not just about uh, these uh, best horses of Australia and New Zealand. Some of the young driving talent was out in force uh, a little earlier today. Uh, these junior trotters are really a lot of fun. They see the Shetlands going around and they, they take it very seriously. You get kids from all over the country here. Oh, absolutely. A lot of Victorians up here and uh, some from even as far away as WA to be part of this action. And uh, uh, the horses won't be the stars of the future, but some of the kids in the bikes will be. You're not saying we're, we're looking at any future Inu and Dom champions as far as the horse flesh is concerned? I think I'm the mighty Quinn would have them covered, Cam. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, I wonder if he can do it. Three in a row. It's, uh, it's such a, a momentous moment for him, uh, breaking track records in training. Just that little doubt about the greatness of him. $3.7 million in prize money, but it does seem to be travelling as he's Achilles' heel. Well, the people in, uh, in New South Wales and Victoria have still got a bit of a jury out verdict on him at the moment, whereas in WA he's climbed every mountain. He's been over to Auckland and won an Inter-Dominion and an Auckland Cup over there, but he's yet to win a really big one in either Sydney or Melbourne. And today can elevate him from champion to all-time great in the sport, I think. Well, the popular view is this, that is exactly what's going to happen. $3.60 into $3.20. He is our tab market mover. Let's take up the atmosphere of this race as they begin to score up. Uh, they'll gradually be called into line here, and Sky Racing's Fred Hastings is going to bring it home for you. 18 months ago, came back a few months ago and has been uh, racing in great heart. They're moving up. This is the tab.com.au Inter Dominion Grand Final. 14 starters to line up. Kiyang Cullen comes up on the outside. Devil Dodge, the emergency, will come out of nine. That was the position that was to be uh, held by Lincoln Royal, who unfortunately has been withdrawn, giving Devil Dodger the run. Coming up now is Mr. Magical Mac. Terror to love. They're all on gate. Just about set for the big one. Ready to run. It's green for go. They're racing. Chariot King centre of the line showing brilliant early speed as looking to get across and lead. Marsish was hunting up and in the middle is Caribbean Blaster. Deeper out is Devil Dodger as Chariot King was able to cross. Marsish immediately works away from the inside there. And then Pub Blitz who's going to get a nice cart through from Mark Alert. Further back then to Bitter Bliss. A length away on the outside was Jacka Cliven. A length and a half to Washaki and XL Stride. Kian Cullen was trapped deep and has had to go right back towards the tail with Mr. Magical Mac Terror to love and I'm the mighty Quinn is going to settle second to last as they work into the back straight now and they've got a mile and a half left to travel and Marsish worked around the outside of Chariot King to take up the front running on the outside poster without cover is Devil Dodger and Pub Blitz is three markers and fourth Caribbean Blasters dropped into a great trailing position one out and one back and Bitter Bliss four back the inside of Mark Alert here's Washaki on his bike taking off around them working up out three wide trailed by XL Stride Mr. Magical Mac was about seventh and eighth as they run down the back with Jacka Clive to its outside. Terrida Love starts a searching run from the tail but does have some cover and the last pair were Kiyang Cullen and back with it as I'm the Mighty Queen in a pretty tight and compact bunch only about eight lengths first to last. They run down the side and Marsish is the leader. Around the outside now XL Stride is going to go up and park but might end up with the 1-1 uh, trail here because Terrida Love was on his back. Chariot King enjoys a cosy smother up on the leaders back in third and then came Washaki Pub Blitz and Caribbean Blaster next. Further back then, on the inside was Bitter Bliss and Devil Dodgers being shuffled back to a little worse than midfield. Mr. Magical Mac was back on the inside of Mark Alert. The inside of runners was Kiyang Cullen. Jacka Clive has gone all the way back to second to last and I'm the mighty Quinner still last of all. They come down the home straight. They've got 1,500 metres left to go. The lead time, 1.44 and 9 and the leader is Marsish, making a bold bid to pretty much go all the way in the 3,009 metre final. Terra de Love had gone up on the outside to park without cover. In third spot, Chariot King enjoying a cosy run. XL Stride, the New South Wales Hope, gets the one by one for the last 1,400. Pub Blitzer's three markers and racing fifth, followed by Washaki in the moving line. Bitter Bliss is next on the inside from Caribbean Blaster. It's been shuffled back. Mark Alert takes off. Mr. Magical Mac on the inside. Devil Dodger was next from Kian Cullen. I'm the mighty Quinn. Jumps onto the back of Mark Alert. So Quinny's got a tag home. And in the middle, Jacker Clive pulling his head off as at the top. 
tail of the field. First split of the last mile was 31.2 as they go by the 900 metres. The leader is Marsish. Shows the way by three parts of a length. Second is Terra de Love. Chariot King under lock and key. Excel Striders poised to pounce on the outside of Pub Blitz. And then came Washaki. Mark Alert continues to surge around them. Bitter Bliss is hopelessly entrenched on the inside. And then came Caribbean Blaster in a lot of traffic. On the outside is I'm the Mighty Queen with a piggyback home over Mr. Magical Mac Jacker, Clive and Key and Cullen. And they're seven lengths first to last. 29-7 for the second split. The field work towards the home corner in the final. Marcy, she's the leader. Giving back as a great sight. Trying hard as Terra to Love. No run chariot. King and XL stride. Mark alert. And here comes I'm the Mighty Queen to the outside. They flatten in. Marcy, the leader. Inch by inch. Terra to Love is trying to wear it down. XL stride runs on. And I'm the Mighty Queen trying to make it three consecutive wins. He's finishing brilliantly. Here comes Quiddy. He's put both of them in one stride. He's dashed away. He's a champion from head to toe. And I'm the Mighty Quid has beaten Marsish. Third home was XL Stride and then came Terra de Love, Caribbean Blaster with Sharky. Next home was Bitter Bliss from Pub Blitz and then came Mr. Magical Mac and Key Yang Cullen, Devil Dodger, Chariot King, Jacker Clive. And Mark Alert was TKO to the 200 metres, galloped and finished a long last. 26-7 up the straight at the end of 3,009 metres. And he's run 158 and one mile rate. He is a champion with a capital C. Well, you saw one of the great inter-dominion performances. There is absolutely no doubt about I'm the Mighty Quinn's greatness now because nothing was set up for him in that race and he blew him away. The whole of WA will be saying, we've told you this for two years, you wouldn't listen. He came from absolute last in a field of great horses. Look at this speed. I always thought in the back of my mind, if you're within striking distance, you'll beat them. That's unbelievable. Three in a row for Quinny. He's won in New Zealand. He's won in Perth. And he's come to Sydney and beaten the best field he's met yet. That was greatness. Three times Inter-Dominion champion. And do you think that uh, Gary Hall is happy about that? Oh, absolutely thrilled. Terror to love, great drive, got outside of the leader. Marsish had his chance in front as well. When you come from last cam, even if you get a card into it and you beat them like that, uh, he smashed the clock. The official last quarter was 26.7. He must have run 25 and change. Takes him well over the $4 million in prize money. And uh, Black's a fake record as far as prize money is concerned. Very much under siege now. And he needs to be put in the Black's a fake league now. He's nowhere near as tough as Black's a fake, but he's as great for different reasons. Any doubters today have been silenced. That was breathtaking. The way he ate up that straight, it was a slow pace throughout, not really set up for a come from behind horse and he just had that pace which he showed in training earlier this week. He has been in sensational form and Emma Friedman, Gary Hall Jr. must be out of his skin about that. Absolutely, Greg. Congratulations to you, Gary. He is now an absolute legend of the sport. His third Inter-Dominion final. How does that make you feel? Oh, unbelievable. Just so overwhelming. Um, out of every big race we've been to, we've got more people here this time than any. They've all travelled across with us, friends and family. And um, oh, just just to silence all these critics about winning over in the East, that's the biggest, biggest thrill here. Um, he had so many supporters in Sydney, though, and I'd like to thank them as well. They're everywhere I went, I got wish, well wishes of good luck, and um, everyone thinks he's a champ. But, yeah, just just unbelievable feeling. What does it feel like when you're flying along behind a horse like that he's got, especially on the turn when he makes his trademark move? Yeah, it's um, it's probably something you wouldn't, you know, not normally experience by a pace. You know, gallop, sprint and gallop is probably the foot. But pulled up after I said to Morgan Woolley, I said every driver should just get the get the um, right to sit behind him one day it's just unbelievable speed and um, you know to cover horses like that so quickly it's just you know it's unheard of well a great thrill to share with this horse but also your father as well a terrific team so much emotion down here greg <laughs> yes gary hall is uh, very emotional he's uh, won three in a row gaz and that might be his greatest Oh, it, it was pretty good. <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. I've lost my voice. When did you start cheering? Um, well, I started cheering when he got on the back of the cover. I thought he was home then. Tell us about what you were thinking. When he was last, did you give him no, no, any I never, hope? I never give up on him because he's so good. 
you know, all he needed to do was get cover into it, and uh, he's just a great horse. He's never been beaten in an Inter Dominion heat or final. No. Undefeated. Undefeated. So I think he just lost his powder puff title. And what about this boy, your son? Superstar. He's driven another fantastic race. He's the best. <laughs> Go and enjoy it. Gary Hall Sr., who, along with his son Gary Hall Jr., have taken out the last three Inter Dominion Grand Finals. One, of course, happened after the winner smoking up returned a positive swab, but he's won his last two as the ultimate champion, and he is one of the best pacers we've ever seen. Yes, uh, what a fantastic story unfolding before our eyes here at Menangle Park, and Greg Radley touched on it there. This horse undefeated in Inter Dominion competition. Absolutely. A uh, little snapshot on the history of the horse uh, and the trainer and driver. Trainer Gary Hall Sr. is one of the greatest trainers we've ever seen. He was one of the worst drivers we've ever seen during his career. He's <laughs> produced a champion son of a driver. They are a magnificent team. The horse, in his early days, had all of the speed we've seen, but he was weak. He didn't want to put his head out and get into a fight. As time's gone on, he's matured. He's strengthened up and... What a moment as Dad comes to meet Son out on the track. They may never have a moment, or they've certainly never had a moment like this before because winning away from home uh, on the stage that takes him from, I think, champion to all-time great now. It puts him up with the Blacks of Fakes and the Popular Arms and all, all of those great horses before them. Yes, and the previous multiple winners of this race, like Hondo Grattan, Gamma Light, Ursa Elsa Vancelot, he's, he's right up there in the upper echelon now, uh, a Hall of Famer. Yeah, deservedly so, and... What a privilege to be here to see it. Yep, and uh, look at that. I think he just counted out three. He might have counted out four. Maybe he's telling us uh, what's going to happen next year. It's back uh, here next year. Uh, what a fantastic performance. We're going to take a break on the wide world of sports. You've seen one of the great performances here at the Inner Dominion.